Catherine, you are exploring and building a startup called Integrate AI that's really an AI-enabled SaaS company at the forefront of using all these latest machine learning techniques to build a new business model, new and better business models. What is Integrate AI all about? Yeah, sure. So Integrate AI, our focus is to help large consumer enterprises, so retail banks, insurance companies, media companies, et cetera, apply artificial intelligence to do a better job engaging with their customers. So we're really focused on trying to identify top line revenue objectives, uh, metrics that really can impact growth and apply AI in creative and interesting ways to help recommend the next product that might be of interest for a customer. Uh, and also, we, we're interested in early moments in a customer experience that tend to be highly correlated with lifetime value. So we really think businesses succeed when customers experience value, and we want to apply artificial intelligence to make that possible. So for big companies, well, and small companies, but for big companies in particular, embracing these new technologies is a challenge, right? They, their IT organizations aren't ready. Totally. Their, their <laughs> procurement organizations aren't ready. What is the strategy for Integrate AI to penetrate these big opportunities? So uh, artificial intelligence, the systems are only as smart as the data that train them. And so all of this really begins with enterprises having their data in order. And we've seen that there's various levels of the maturity scale. Enterprises are investing in having a new data lake or warehouse or trying to get like what they call a 360 degree of customers since we're focused often on customer data. And honestly, that is not often the sexiest work, but the most important in real applied success with artificial intelligence. And so we do a lot of work when we go in and just help companies identify the data that they already have. And then we supplement that with third-party data we bring to the table from the likes of Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, et cetera, to expand out uh, the social appreciation of who people are. It's that classic challenge, right, of if you have garbage in, it's garbage out. Absolutely. You've got to get the yeah. data right on the way in. One of the exciting things you're involved with is FFVC Capital. What is the mission of FFVC? So yeah, FF is a New York-based seed and Series A venture fund. And we are focused on investing in passionate entrepreneurs who are building technologies that we believe will have real market penetration in two to five years. So really on the vanguard of what's possible, there's companies, and I, you know, I joined the firm to help work with the artificial intelligence stack. And uh, one of the interesting, I'd say, symptoms of this focus on uh, early commercialization of technology is we established a partnership with New York University, NYU, and founded an incubator there called the NYU Nexus, AI Nexus Lab, that is housing very promising uh, researchers and entrepreneurs that are building great AI companies. I mean, that's exciting. I don't, there are not a lot of VCs that have created those types of academic partnerships. How did you go about forming that partnership? So it was formed prior to my joining the firm. So I, all the credit should go to John Frankel, who's an absolutely inspirational partner. He recently was featured in Quartz, uh, the technology uh, sure. periodical Quartz, for having some of the quirkiest out of office response emails of all the venture community. And John, like myself, uh, background in philosophy. So we. He used to work at Goldman Sachs. We come to the business world with a humanistic interdisciplinary approach. Which is so important. Yeah, I think yeah. especially in the age of AI, actually, um, these systems, this is not technology that's rules-based. It's based upon algorithms that pick up traces in human activity. And bringing that perception and awareness of where bias might exist, how to use these technologies ethically. And then I think in the case of FF, in investing not only in returns today, but really forging academic partnerships to be prepared for what it means to invest five to 10 years out is something unique and, and extraordinary. Yeah, I mean, keep your eye on the horizon. It's hard for a lot of VCs to do that. Uh, what would you like to see changed, Catherine, in the startup ecosystem to help entrepreneurs be more successful? So this is less in the ecosystem and more in the enterprise to startup uh, relationship, let's say. So I come tr primarily from a B2B background and I can say that it's way too hard to do business with large enterprises than we'd love it to be. So there's all sorts of regulations that large enterprises deal with related to uh, data security, privacy, indemnification, liability, et cetera. And often well, and the just contracts, the inertia, they're so big. The inertia, yeah, exactly. And that's, that's one where we at, at Integrate, we 
have a culture focused on empathy. So we always want to appreciate that um, it takes time. And you know, we want to put ourselves in the, in the shoes of our customers and not criticize them for being slow because it's, it, we couldn't do a, a better job if we were in their shoes, right? It's just, it's just hard. Um, but the contracts, literally just on a legal contracting perspective, are developed for the likes of IBM, huge, or McKinsey, or GE, or these huge companies of, of the past. And I really think if, this, if there were just a faster route to just have like slightly different legal requirements for a startup to enable yeah, a business. Yeah, could just accelerate the whole process. Absolutely, yeah, the sales cycles would go down, the cost of doing business would go down, you wouldn't need to hire a GC so earlier on, and it would just, it would just make it easier to, to grow.